Gap. But it's uh, talk time now. Yes. Mm -hmm. After weeks of political banter and threats to the nation's security, Gambia's former president, Gaya Jabe, has finally agreed to step down and allow the newly sworn in president, Adama Barrow, to take over. Well, there are questions regarding when President Barrow will return to the country, especially at a time when the former president, Yaya Jame, is now on exile in Equatorial Guinea. Uh, well, TVC News correspondent Wendy Agbo uh, captured the moments when Barrow was sworn in and the reactions on the streets of Serenkuda. January the 17th, Yaya Jame, president of Gambia, announced a state of emergency and it resulted into mass movement of Gambians from the city capital to Senegal and to the provinces. And Gambians who stayed behind hid in their homes, especially on the 19th, which was supposed to be a day of celebration. They didn't come out until a few hours after the elected president, Adama Barrow, was inaugurated in Dakar. And then they come out in their numbers to Westfield to celebrate. Today we are very happy in standing here. I thank all Gambian for keeping it peaceful and waiting for this day. For this is a day of that we are congratulating Adama Barrow, President Barrow. And we are welcoming him to come here and lead us. He is our president and we will go with him. Every world is happy for Gambia today. Because of 20 good, 22 good years in dictator, that one is finished today in this Gambia and everywhere in this world. Because of why Gambian people they fight this dictatorship because of they don't want any dictatorship in this world again. See the vote, in this vote, every election in this world, Gambian, every world is talking about Gambia's election, is a clean election and a fair election. I feel very excited, you know, I feel very happy, you know, now everyone is free, everyone can do whatever you feel like, you know, without no one arresting you, no one harassing you, man. Officially, the state of emergency is still on, but the people could care less as they celebrate. Wendy Abo, TVC News, Serekunda, Gambia. And that excitement well, was up, obviously infectious. You saw Wendy Abo smiling there. Exactly. <laughs> well, that report was on Thursday yes. when when uh, Wendy was in the town. But Wendy is in the studio with us right, right yeah. now. <laughs> All right, now uh, we have joining us now uh, Dr. Austin Weze, lecturer at Pan Atlantic University. It's good to have you join us. Welcome. Yeah, morning. Thank right, you so good much. Good morning. Yeah. And we have Wendy Agbo, a TVC correspondent. You were there. Thank you for joining us and welcome back home. Thank you, Mike. Of course, Thank Wendy you. spent all of two weeks, uh, yes, yeah, in Gambia. In, in yes, Gambia. Yes, ah, yes, two weeks, wow. Yes. I, I hope you brought some of the food in. Huh. <laughs> 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 All right, let's, let's go on a break yes. and then we come back to dwell on this topic proper. Stay with us. Right, you're welcome back. We're looking at deepening democracy in Africa. And, uh, of course, uh, the Gambia is a case study this morning. Uh, we also have joining us uh, via Skype uh, the deputy, former Deputy Inspector General of Police in the Gambia, uh, Brima uh, Chongan. Good morning and thanks for joining us. 
Uh, good morning. Um, thank you very much uh, for inviting me. Great. All right. Uh, before we go in, into our discussion this morning, uh, of course... Uh, would I have like to get to, to my wall, yes, and so it's good to know can. that uh, Ibrima is joining us from mm -hmm. the United States. But let's get to my oh. wall first as the background to what we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's good to see the wonderful picture of the two men <laughs> in the eye of the storm there. We have, okay, fine. Now, the Gambia is a country in West Africa located in the West and uh, bordered by Senegal on three sides. It, it, it's, it's almost encycled by Gambia and the only space in there is to the Atlantic Ocean. Now the capital is located in Banjul. It is Africa's smallest non-island country and one of the continent's most densely populated countries. As of 2014, the country's population was about 2 million people. Let's go ahead to understanding this country. Now, the country became independent from Britain in 1965, and incidentally, that was the year Yaya Jame was born. A new constitution transformed the country into a republic in 1970, and between 1965 and 1970, the British Queen was in charge of Britain. And, uh, all right, now, the Gambian economy is heavily dependent on peanuts, on tourism, on cotton, and rice, and part of cattle. Now, other exports include, yeah, they said rice, cotton, cattle, among others. Now, tourism is also a major source of, uh, of foreign exchange as many visitors are drawn to the resorts that occupy a stretch of the Atlantic coast. Let's see the Gambia's constitutional framework in there. Now, a president is entitled to a five-year term without limitation or specifying a term of limitation. Now, the president himself appoints the vice president and cabinet members. Legislative power is held by the National Assembly, comprising about 53 uh, National Assembly members who serve five-year terms. Uh, the majority of members are elected, while five are appointed by the President. That's the basics. Now, moving on, uh, after independence in 1965, the country's Prime Minister, uh, Dauda Jawara, led the country and became the President in 1970. In 1994, he was ousted in a coup led by the then Lieutenant Colonel Lieutenant Yaya Jambi and Dabda Jawara escaped to Senegal. Now, uh, let's move on. Yeah, Yaya Jambi has spent about 22 years in office as president of the Gambia. He was elected as president in 1996 after defeating two other candidates. Now, he was re elected in 2001, 2006, and 2011. And uh, in 2014, an attempt was made to overthrow him in a failed coup. A previous attempt was made to oust him in 2006, but failed. Let's examine his stance on membership of international organization. He's been really very dramatic over the years. Mm -hmm. In 2013, he exiled the Commonwealth, a group made up mostly of former British colonies. Uh, he left uh, saying that uh, we are charting our own course. Now, branding it a neo-colonial institution, that was what he called the uh, uh, Commonwealth at the time. Yeah, Jambi announced his country's decision to leave the International Criminal Court uh, uh, in October 2016. He accused the court of unfairly targeting Africa, calling it the International Caucasian Court for the persecution and humiliation of people of color, especially Africans. Now, moving on now, after winning four largely criticized elections, he lost the 2016 election to the main opposition, uh, uh, Adama Barrow. Now, Barrow won 45% of the votes. Uh, Yaya Jambi came with about 36.7%, and the other candidate, Kande, uh, had about 17.8% of the total votes in there. Now, l let me ask, uh, let me bring in uh, uh, Brima here. Let me start with you. Uh, uh, former Deputy Inspector General of Police in the Gambia. Right now, when you, as you sit and watch what's going back home, what's going on, how the politics is playing out, uh, how interesting do you see it or how embarrassing do you think things are in, in Gambia? Well, I wouldn't say it's embarrassing. I mean, we went through uh, 22 years of dictatorship. Um, the, what is happening is we are in a transitional phase. Um, um, it's not going to be easy, but we have a strong coalition of seven parties, and I think um, they will uh, start working very soon now that economic forces are uh, securing the Gambia as we speak. 
All right. Um, uh, back here in the studio, Austin, do you think that this particular um, achievement has come at great cost? Uh, some say a, a deal was struck uh, between the ECOWAS leaders and, of course, uh, Yaya Jame to convince him to just step down. Of course, uh, both uh, financial um, um, costs and um, the human resource, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and the material costs. And the fact that he may not answer to some of the atrocities yes, he's alleged to have but committed. I'm happy that the uh, regional powers are now standing at, are trying to assert themselves mm -hmm. uh, because it's long, they have tried, uh, extended the olive branch to him and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's good, it's a good signal, it's a good precedent that has been, you know, set by this um, arrangement. Mm -hmm. And then it will extend to other African, you know, the whole of Africa. And uh, the role of the United uh, Nations and, uh, and, you know, in um, giving the, uh, even though they were a bit uh, careful in, mm -hmm. in their support to, yeah. uh, for, for military intervention. But again, the, the whole idea that the, the man was sworn in, in Senegal, a barrel, mm -hmm. and then because the United Nations now are focusing on the self-determination rather than the sovereignty, you know, and um, so they can invite anybody to, mm. uh, to help you out and, and, and stuff. And that was exactly what they did. Uh, but there's one other thing I want to mention before I forget about mm. Nigeria's role. Mm -hmm. You know, Nigeria played, supposed to play a major a key role. Yeah. And they, they uh, handed over that leadership to Senegal. To Senegal. Mm. Which, is, which is unfortunate. Mm. Nigeria is supposed to be at the forefront. Any other person can now support. And I don't know why our leaders are too shy to take up that responsibility. You know, I was so embarrassed. But, but, but if we you see know? it on the other hand, uh, Senegal has been involved with Gambia over the, over the decades. Uh, that do you see that as, as very strategic? No, that notwithstanding. Okay. It's not to be compared with the role Nigeria plays in the whole of Africa. Nigeria is Africa. Africa is Nigeria, more or less. Mm. So Nigeria should stand up and play that role and not hand over that leadership to Senegal. Mm. Senegal can only support. Nigeria should even bring about uh, 10,000 or uh, 20,000 soldiers mm. and led by, the Senegalese soldiers can, because they understand the terrain. Mm. They yes. can be in front, you know? I like the fact that they, they say setting a warship and, and uh, some uh, militaries, so but that's not enough. Mm. But okay. to allow Senegal to lead a team, I even announced in the media. Well, I wonder if Gambians would really mind, you know, that Nigeria was not really at the forefront of this, but it played its <laughs> part. No, but we well, let mind. me bring in, uh, before we go to Wendy, uh, who has a situation report for us. Um, uh, uh, Chongan, now, would you say that the institutions, especially the judiciary and, of course, the Electoral Commission, uh, can absolve uh, themselves of causing this crisis uh, that could have been avoidable? where you have the Electoral Commission actually say that uh, Barrow only won by very, very minimal or marginal uh, number. Well, still imagine that's the case, maybe. It, it, with this <laughs> coming from the Electoral Commission, do you think it sets the stage for this uh, crisis that could have been avoided? No, no, no. I don't think the Electoral Commission should be faulted at all. Remember, everything was leaked in favor of Jammeh. And on the day that Jammeh considered defeat, he quoted the exact numbers that the Electoral Commission revised afterwards. Remember, this was a police state, so he knew exactly what was happening. I think he changed his mind because he realized that he could be prosecuted or, 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 or the consequences afterwards. Mm. And I also want to address the, and when it comes to the judiciary, I mean, it's not only the judiciary, the judiciary has been completely uh, uh, Jammeh has really controlled everything in that country. And unfortunately, we have some Nigerian judges. They were not sent by the Nigerian government. These are people that Jammeh just used and appointed and make them judges, who were also very complicit um, in the system. The actual chief justice is a Nigerian, and he was putting on Jammeh's party uh, paraphernalia and seen campaigning together with Jammeh. So obviously, he was not impartial. All right, and, and also, I wanted, to, I, I wanted to address one of the guys on the studio who talked about um, Nigeria should leave. I mean, this was an ECOWAS thing, and I think Nigeria leave because President Buhari went there twice um, mm. to, 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 to tell the guy to stand down. Mm. And also, you have to understand our geography. Um, we, Gambia and Senegal, we are, big, we, we are the same people. It's just like uh, you have an Igbo or, or Yoruba man or how the man who is divided and there are two countries. We, we, we speak the same language. And I think we have to comment ECOWAS. ECOWAS did a brilliant job. 
and hopefully they will set an example and a precedent for the rest of Africa. Mm. All right. Uh, Wendy, let me come to you on this. You were on ground. You interacted with the people. You went into the villages and towns and cities mm. of Gambia. Now, when the people were happy, what were they saying? Why, why were they so happy? What were they really saying about uh, uh, the outcome of uh, the, the situation in the Gambia? Hmm. Actually, for most Gambians, it, it, was, it was like liberation itself. Hmm. Uh, they felt uh, Yaya, uh, Yaya Jame had stayed for too long. I mean, the man had been president for 22 years. Uh, they felt at the beginning he was quite okay for most Gambians. Uh, they said, okay, you've done quite enough. We just want you to leave. Let somebody else come in. And then there were also um, accusations, accusations, alleged accusations of rape, uh, killings, abductions, kidnappings. Uh, those were the things that they were supposed to call him for prosecution for before he announced he wasn't um, going to accept accept the elections results. So all those things were the things that uh, made uh, most Gambians wary of the fact that this man wanted to stay back Did, did again. you get a sense that Gambians would actually want justice and justice for them would not only mean that Jame is out of the scene but he will answer to questions? Yes, because uh, the period where we were waiting uh, for the last ECOWAS delegation that is the president of Guinea and that of Mauritania to finish the discussion they were having, the negotiation they were having with Jame, we had few um, Gambians who were standing around waiting and one of them actually said to us that hey we were here uh, when Jamie came in through queue I'm waiting for him to come out bundled out like they just wanted him to pay for uh, the crimes the said crimes mm -hmm. he had committed they wanted him disgraced they did just didn't want him to just leave the way he left with entourage entering an aircraft and walking away they wanted him to pay for his crimes in fact they were looking forward to the ECOWAS invasion mm -hmm. Well, and, and the irony there, when he got to, from the reports we got, when he got to the airport, there were still so many supporters who were wailing and crying. So crying. That, actually, that's the, actually the in interesting part of it. <laughs> I mean, the, the day the high court sitting held, you, the crowd turned out in their numbers to support him. And, well, um, some Gambians told me there that 80% uh, of Gambians are educated and 20% um, 20 of Gambians are educated and 80% are illiterate. That it is the illiterate. That actually, <laughs> okay, so it's the illiterate that played out. But unfortunately, they are the majority. <laughs> let's bring in, let's bring in uh, uh, Brima here. I mean, uh, you, you are a Gambian, a former IG in that country. Uh, would you say then that the, the Jame's uh, hold to power was, uh, it continued for as long as the people themselves allowed it to happen? And when you have examples from uh, Mugabe, from Kurunziza, and uh, places like that, of course, Museveni of uh, Uganda, uh, this may have given uh, Jame some level of confidence to want to perpetrate himself. Well, I, I think you answer the question well, when we... Everyone, okay. let's put you on we'll the hold. Have actually have you answer the break. question after the break. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Stay with us on the program. Discussing development from the Gambia and specifically we're talking about deepening democracy in Africa mm. and uh, the examples and uh, developments from the Gambia. We have in the studio with us a lecturer at the Pan-Atlantic University, Dr. Austin Weze, with us in here. We also have uh, correspondent Wendy Agbo who was in Gambia and uh, saw it all. We also have joining us on Skype from the United States, uh, former Deputy Inspector General of Police in the Gambia. Uh, Ebrima Chongan joining us. Ngozi, you asked yes. a question earlier on. Yes, uh, I think indeed. Ebrima is supposed to respond to the question you asked. Uh, I, I don't know if he, uh, he heard my question, but let me just uh, quickly rephrase. The examples from Mugabe in Kurunziza and, uh, of course, uh, Museveni in Uganda, and maybe the complacency of the people themselves, uh, have all of this played or combined to give Jamin confidence to want to continue in power? Absolutely. I mean, what has happened in Gambia, I, as I said, Gambians are very peaceful uh, people. And also, remember, when Jama overthrew the democratically elected government, it was a democratic government, but it has been power for quite a long time. So as soon as Jama came to power, there was a lot of people, opportunists, people with hidden agenda who wanted to settle scores. And also, that is how he used, and then he started to do some projects to impress people. And slowly, to have lost of uh, human rights, he started clamping down slowly, slowly, until he had a total control 
and Gambia is a very small country. Um, so now you have a secret police, and everybody was afraid of each other. It, I mean, it's, it's, it was really sad that when, you, when we see Gambian friends who come and meet us in the UK, and you're always seeing them looking behind, and you're asking, what's your problem? So it, Jame became very confident and then became very arrogant. And he also, as you rightly said, he has seen Mugabe, he has seen other African leaders who, who stay there, and he said, you know, let me take my chance. Mm. All right, uh, well, uh, Dr. Mweze, let me come to you on this. Yeah. Now, looking at how Gambia is at this at the standpoint, Adama Baro coming into or stepping into office right now, what kind of challenges mm -hmm. do you think he's going to face? Well, he has a huge challenge. Don't forget that the coalition uh, they have uh, only three years before mm -hmm. the next round of elections. And uh, if all is well, they can also say, okay, why don't you roll over and, and stuff like that. But it's a huge challenge. Three years to want to reconcile the, uh, the nation and also the mm -hmm. interests involved. Two, to create jobs, to build up the economy, you know. And again, uh, three, sourcing for the funds to do all the projects that they have. These are huge challenges, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, you know, as a small country and all that, uh, they don't have much of uh, uh, foreign reserve and, you know, something to uh, fall, back uh, fall, fall back on, on apart from aid from, you know, mm -hmm. good... Uh, countries and um, you know good-hearted countries and and also uh, uh, revenues from uh, little exports and uh, especially tourism mm. and uh, you know tourism is a major uh, revenue, revenue uh, generation uh, for, for them mm. you know so it's a huge challenge uh, these three major factors you know, will, will this challenge include a, a need probably to tweak the, the Constitution that allows the president to, to pick uh, members of the National Assembly. Yeah, and I, I think uh, w one of the challenges that democracy has of, in, uh, in the whole of Africa mm. uh, is that it's not homegrown. Mm. You know, you need to go back to begin to look at how do we naturally, Africans, evolve, you know, evolve yes, our own system. And that's the only way democracy can deepen in Africa. Mm. Uh, because it, as long as we copy and paste and not considering our cultures, the way we behave, the you know, norms and all that, traditions and stuff like that. Mm. It is going to affect a deepening of democracy in Africa. So, it, you know, maybe this is a, an arrangement, a template that was left, left with them when the, the British left and all that, you know, that they're still operating and, and, and stuff like that. So they need to look at some of these things and begin to tweak the, the, the constitution and see how one of, the, one of the problems, I think they should step back reflect what caused problems mm -hmm. and then how can is it a constitutional problem tweak it to suit the current realities and, and, and until that is done we, democracy cannot depend in the gambia in anywhere, the, anywhere, anywhere in africa, in africa. All right. Even in, in addition to that, apart from domestic issues, if, if we look at the internationals, uh, Jame had pulled out of the Commonwealth, pulled out mm -hmm. of the ICC. Now, Adam Abaro coming in now, would there be pressure on him to of go back into returning to this? Of, co uh, of course. The, that, that's, that's the role of foreign powers in all of this. I know that uh, being a very religious uh, man, you know, because you always see him with the chaplets. And, and all that, the, the foreign powers that were actually supporting him, that even made him, because he didn't wake up on his own to declare Gambia an Islamic, uh, Islamic country. Uh, yeah, Islamic country. You know, powers like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and uh, United Arab Emirates, they could also have influenced him and supported him with money. Now, the living Commonwealth, maybe not enough is coming from the Commonwealth uh, uh, you know, side, and it's coming from this other foreign uh, side, you know, that was why that he even um, you know, exited that, that, that. So Barrow could also, you know, go back. It is possible that he could go back to that. And again, the ICC that he exited, you know, I just hope that they won't go back, you know, because it was a good thing that one aspect of the things that he did, he exited the ICC, you know, mm -hmm. that he did. So that African problems should be solved by Africa. Africa. Yeah, but, but before leaving that, is there an alternative back home to say, okay, we are leaving that now, there's something for us to fall back on? No, but again, he was smart enough to have done, knowing that he may end up in the ICC. <laughs> <laughs> so he protected his own interest by exiting the All ICC. Right, let, let, let's uh, ask uh, very quickly, uh, Chonga. Now, the first time since independence in 1965 that Gambians have changed their government through the ballot box, of course, that was threatened, but thankfully, uh, the ballot box has, uh, you know, carried... 
uh, the day. Now, in, in determining what, I mean, it, it, it's obvious that Barrow has a lot on his plate. What do you think would be the immediate concerns of the average uh, Gambian right now as uh, Barrow takes over? Is this question directed at me? Yes, it is. Well, I think he has reached us as Professor has well estimated. I think what they need to do is to reorganize because Gambia has basically destroyed all the institutions in the Gambia. So we have the institutions, the civil service, I mean, security forces, the judiciary. And at the same time, as the Professor Rand said, we don't have a lot of resources, so we will depend on a lot of international goodwill um, from our African brothers and the, and the wider international community. But I think the key is they have to uh, promote uh, rule of law. And the president had an interview yesterday in the Senegalese television, and he said that we will have a truth and reconciliation commission. I think it's very important because we need a lot of healing process uh, 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 for the trauma that we have gone through in these past 20 years. Mm. Okay. Uh, let me, uh, Wendy, let me come to you on this. Well, uh, I've been talking about you meeting with the people because I know how mm. much of interaction you have with the people. Mm. What, you, what are the expectations from the new president coming in, Adama Baru? Mm. I think for most Gambians, at the period when I was there, uh, the most of their expectation was Jamek leaves, Adama Barrow comes in. Mm. We just want a stable they, democracy. They just want a change. They wanted a change. Okay. They wanted a stable democracy. They wanted a president who doesn't kidnap people, who doesn't kill people, who doesn't rape people, who allows democracy to rule the country. Mm. Uh, Austin, before we, we wrap now, <laughs> uh, in, in his speech, Adama Barrow, uh, talked about something that's very profound. He said uh, he's determined to build a Gambia where merit and what you know counts more than who you know. Uh, I, I think that's germane. That's the only way that can uh, uh, deliver Gambia. And again, don't forget that the third of the enlightened ones, uh, graduates, are outside the country. Yes. So that could also he bring them. He actually did uh, call yeah. out to the yes. diaspora to... Diaspora in, mm. in Africa, sh for Africa to grow, African mm. nations to grow, they need to reach out to the, those, uh, the citizens in the diaspora. Mm. You know, other countries in Asia, they have done it. Okay, and uh, Gambia should do it. They have the skills, they have some money, they have connections and all that. They can attract investment. They can attract the requisite skills to build up the economy and strengthen, don't forget the institutions are weak mm. and, and because of what the, the JAME did. In fact, JAME has been the only institution all the yeah. while <laughs> from the reports and we it's got. A, it's institutions <laughs> that uh, determine economic growth, that <laughs> drive economic growth. All right, let, let's, let's, sorry, let, let's bring in Fola Dele in here too. We don't have all the time, but... Yes. Uh, yeah, I had to have you on. <laughs> you know, I'm glad because there's, there's quite a, um, a number of reactions that I think you might be interested in seeing. Mm. So let's see what some people are saying online. Okay. Atamojua says, if you're attacking Buhari for Nigeria's involvement in restoring democracy in Gambia, you don't know how to attack presidents. Learn. Omogba Mila says, to think that thousands of our citizens live in Gambia, it's only normal for Nigeria to be involved. No need for further arguments. Dapsi Martin says, hashtag Jame must go, or Jame has gone, to be honest. <laughs> UN endorses Barrow as Gambia president. Jame chose this honor when the door of honor was opened before him. Enjoy the shame. Whoa. King Castle says, dear Yaya Jame, the world will never forget you. Is it for good or for bad? <laughs> for exactly, that's the question. Umaru Fofana says, with Jame gone, Gambia has, has ahead of it a massive garden of roses with giant thorns. Mm. How the flowers are plucked will soothe or hurt. Mm. Indeed. So, Saiku so, so Jame, <laughs> these names. The sun is smiling on Gambia, not because Jame has gone or Barrow is coming, but because Gambia has decided that never again. And last one here from Tamika Wilson. She says, still can't get over how I thought Gambia was in Dubai. Whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really quickly, um, Austin, before I go, yeah. um, what do you think African leaders can learn from the way things panned out in Gambia? Yeah, that things are uh, no longer the same way, you know, that mm. um, the days of um, staying in power and all that, even when you stay long in power, nothing is actually, no development, nothing, uh, the governance is not provided, the human rights and all that. I think it's a good lesson 
that it's no longer business as usual, mm -hmm. that when the people speak, it's mm -hmm. people's power now. Mm -hmm. So that is the one lesson you know, uh, that we have. To, and if they have done otherwise, for Jamet to spend one more day, it could have been a bad precedent mm -hmm. you know, for the whole of Africa, even the S South America and some of these countries. So it will spell uh, doom for the world. You know, not just for democracy, uh, but for the people, people's power. Because power now going back to the people. The people. All right. Uh, well, this oh. is where we have to round off the discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Austin Weze, thank you for coming on the program. Thank you so much. And uh, Wendy, welcome home. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ebrima Chongan, thank you for joining us uh, all the way from the UK. Thank you for joining us. All right. I guess we can safely yeah. say that democracy yeah, has come to stay has come in to Africa. St it's coming to stay in Africa. Okay. We, we still have cases <laughs> where... Uh, ah, fine. I don't um, want to mention that. But <laughs> <all right. laughs> So we've come to the end of today's edition of the program. Tomorrow, we'll be back again with other discussions. Stay with us on the program, usually on TVC. I am Mike Okwache. And I'm Ngozi Alibuwe. To have you join us again tomorrow, same time, 7 a.m. Yeah, Fola Dele is behind us right here. <laughs> All right, bye for Thank now. Thank you, bye.